Hello, and welcome to part two. Uh, we're going to discuss a little bit about Freeman's ongoing attorney issues. Um, I know I'm just a first-year family law attorney, but I know a thing or two about a thing or two. Uh, number one, Freeman brought his troubles on himself. Every issue that Freeman is experiencing after Fort Huachuca, which I still think that he can win that case if he doesn't step on his own dick too hard. Every single issue he has had since then have been of his own making. Uh, this is according to what he stated in his little video um, complaining about his attorney. He went to his own arraignment. Uh, he didn't want to plead. Remember, the court had to enter a plea for him of not guilty. And uh, the court was asking questions like, uh, what, what's your financial situation, etc.? and Freeman didn't want to answer it. So Freeman didn't realize, or maybe he did and he's lying, I don't know, but he didn't realize that he had an attorney assigned to him. Um, amazingly enough, a first year family law attorney that was thousands of miles away in California was able to figure it out. Uh, so that's that was his mistake. His mistake was not paying attention at that hearing. His second mistake was he went out and he hired a general practitioner with three years of experience. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with a general practitioner with three years of experience. However, uh, you got to remember that they only have three years of experience and they don't specialize in any particular field. That doesn't mean you'll get a worse attorney, but there is something to be said for experience and for specializing in a particular area. Now, if that third year general practitioner had, for example, an experienced attorney that he was associated with, I think that Mr. Freeman would be much better served. However, it was Freeman's choice to make. It was Freeman's choice to hire this attorney. Freeman chose to hire this attorney. Now this attorney cost Freeman $4,000. Freeman thinks that he was entitled to some sort of refund. I don't know. Uh, you'd have to see the attorney billing statements and Freeman hasn't shown us those Generally attorneys will break down what they charge by the hour by the tenth of the hour Typically, that's what I've seen. Sometimes I've seen him do it as as uh, break it down as far as the uh, 20th of an hour every point oh five instead of every point one but typically my experience from, from reviewing attorney billing records in the various cases I've been in, attorneys tend to charge by the tenth of the hour. And attorneys tend to, tend to give uh, statements on how much they've spent. That's been my experience. Anyway, uh, whether or not he had a refund coming, I don't know. If just for for grins and giggles, let's say he hired that attorney and that attorney charged $500 an hour, uh, $4,000 at $500 an hour would be about eight hours. And eight hours isn't a long time of actual work to do. You write, you write two motions and you can eat up eight hours. You go to one hearing, you eat up four hours. That's pretty easy to do. Uh, then his, then Freeman decided to fire his three-year attorney and hire Higgins. That was Freeman's choice. Freeman made that decision. Freeman paid a $5,000 retainer and according to Freeman, he paid another $5,000 for trial and he got an $80 refund. I would, again, without seeing the billing statements from the attorney, I would submit to you that the attorney has provided a breakdown of costs. And I would also submit to you that having spent $10,000 on an attorney for the better part of a year and several hearings, I think that Mr. Freeman got a hell of a deal. Again, a half day hearing, just showing up for, uh, for 20 minutes. Just because, it's a, it, just because it's not a full day hearing, that's $1,400 for me, for me to appear. And I'm just a first year family law attorney. I can't imagine what Mr. Higgins, who has 40 plus years of experience, would charge. Now, 
criminal defense attorneys, they tend to operate by a very, a very strict motto. Get your money up front, and there's a good reason for that. Win or lose, that attorney has already been paid. He's been paid for his time, he's been paid for his efforts. You don't pay an attorney for a result. You pay him to you pay him for the effort. Criminals are notoriously recalcitrant in paying their bills after they've lost. And it's very hard to satisfy a judgment against someone who's sitting in prison. So criminal defense attorneys, they get their money up front. Now, why am I bringing this up? In his first video, Freeman's big gotcha moment was that, was that Higgins told Freeman to stop your stupid uh, activism because it's getting in the way of Higgins winning. Well, Higgins isn't on contingency fees. Higgins' only motivation to win is to do right by his client. That's what you're paying him to do. That's what he wants to do. Sounds to me like your attorney was trying to be helpful. And uh, remember, this has already been filtered. We haven't heard this from Higgins. We have heard this from Freeman. So at worst, it's a lie. At best, it's been filtered through Freeman's senses. And Freeman is a fucking sovereign citizen. So he sees shit wrong. He sees it different, i.e. wrong. So fast forward to uh, his last video on Higgins, at least the last one that I saw, where his big smoking gun is that a Google review was left by someone who claims to be a retired police detective. I don't know if he was, I don't know if he wasn't. This person claims to be speaking for law enforcement. I don't know if he can, I don't know if he does, but that's what his claim was. This person said that Higgins is respected in the law enforcement community. Now Freeman's a sneaky, slippery little snake, and, and Freeman turned that respect into like. And that's disingenuous. Freeman's a little liar. Uh, the guy said that the, the law enforcement community respected Higgins. And Freeman said, oh, they like Higgins. Why would they like Higgins? Nah, he didn't say that. Freeman's also under the misapprehension, misconception, that it is the police versus the defendant, and it is not. Higgins, Higgins' opponent is the prosecutor. That's who Higgins' opponent is, not the police. Higgins is going up against the prosecutor. The prosecutor is representing the state. In this case, the state being the federal government, but when I say state, just in general, that means the government. A government. City, county, state, or federal, it's just, I just call them all state. By the loose definition of state, but not by the uh, 50 states definition of state. Anyway. So, the police are at best a witness, at best a witness, and the police, if they do respect him, it does not mean anything about his, his uh, ability to defend his clients. It doesn't say, it doesn't say that, that, he's, that he gets the results the police want. It says that they respect him. There are attorneys that I respect. There aren't a whole lot of attorneys that I like other than the, one, the ones I work with, but there are several that I respect because they're good attorneys. They do a good job. They, they don't waste their time, my time, the client's time. They're, they're efficient. They're, their responses and their replies and their objections and their motions are topical. They're relevant. They're well written. I mean, it's I can respect them for their ability to practice law. That doesn't mean I like them. What would be telling would be whether the victims of Higgins' defendants, the people that that those defendants have robbed and raped and killed and and done all sorts of other horrible things to, did the victims 
like Higgins. There's your tell. If if Higgins throws, if he throws things, if he throws the, the hearings, if he throws the cases, the trials, so that the victims are happy with the result, that would be telling. But Freeman's not smart enough to figure that shit out. Freeman, in Freeman's world, in Freeman's world, it's the cops versus Freeman. And it's not. It's the state versus Freeman. Currently in his Fort Huachuca case, it is the federal government versus James Allen Springer. Nothing to do with the cops. In his Leon Valley one, it was the state of Texas. It is the state of Texas versus James Allen Springer. So James is just sadly mistaken every which way you slice it. He's trying to blame his own decisions on his attorney. And let me tell you one last thing, one final thing. His attorney has filed a motion. I, I think it might be heard today or yesterday. I don't remember exactly which, but his attorney filed a motion to withdraw. And he cited a breakdown in communications. And, and Freeman, being retarded, thinks that a breakdown in communications means that Freeman wasn't available by phone or by email. And he was. Oh, my. No. A breakdown in communications is when your client is telling you how to, how to run the case, how, how to do the legal processes involved. And the client doesn't have that right. And trying to represent a sovereign citizen is a no-win situation for an attorney. Because remember, Freeman thinks that that, that that trial memorandum should have been filed as a motion to dismiss. It would have lost as a motion to dismiss. The, the court would have summarily denied it because it is not alleging any true basis for a motion to dismiss. It is argument. That's all it is. It is argument submitted to the court ahead of the actual oral arguments. A lot of a lot of jurisdictions require trial briefs, trial memorandum prior to the actual hearing. So that's the breakdown in communications. James Freeman is retarded and he thinks that you can that you can uh, do things legally that you can't and he's trying to tell his attorney how to do things his attorney with 40 plus years of experience knows better and is telling him no and now well freeman hasn't for a long time trusted his attorney or relied on his advice and has in fact gone expressly against the advice of his attorney so that's your breakdown in communications thanks for watching have a great day